Hey everyone, welcome to Learning Trout Behavior, Episode 3. This series includes a collection of underwater footage that I film whenever I go out on one of my fishing trips. And the purpose is to gather as much footage of the different trout species that I fish for as possible in hopes that we'll learn something about these species that we didn't know before. So sit back, relax, and let's see if we can learn something together. We're going to start in Lake Tahoe, California. My buddy Josh and I decided to beach our kayak in this little cove, and not long after we started fishing, we spotted a couple of 16 to 18 inch fish cruising 10 feet from the shoreline. Originally, we thought they were rainbow trout, but they turned out to be brown trout. Now, over the course of a couple hours, we watched at least two different browns swimming around in this cove. And one thing I'm observing while watching this footage, these brown trout had a habit. They would consistently swim back and forth from the shallow water and to the deeper water. And they did this for hours. I think that goes to show that brown trout, and I think also many other species of trout, they are always cruising different depths of the water. Next, I'm going to reposition the camera, and I want you to watch how this five pound camera comes crashing down into the water, and these Lahotan red side shiners, instead of being spooked by the noise, they actually are attracted to it and come swimming over and start feeding on all the little particles that come dislodged from the rock. And then just a few moments later, one of the brown trout comes cruising right through. Now I'm going to turn up the volume here on the underwater GoPro because I want you to hear what's about to happen. I somehow make a sound on the shoreline that was the perfect pitch to send this brown trout straight into the safety of the deeper water. Now, Trout have two ways of hearing. They have internal ears that are similar to how humans hear. And then they also have what are called lateral lines on each side of their body that allows them to feel sound. So I just thought it was interesting that the splash caused by the underwater camera didn't spook the brown trout or the shiners. If anything, it attracted them. While the sound I made on the shore was just the right pitch to spook the brown trout and the shiners, sending them swimming into the deeper water for safety. You know, I thought this was an interesting observation because it made me think, what sounds are trout indifferent to, attracted to, and repelled to? Because I don't think it's as simple as trout are skittish of all sounds. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. I would love to hear your thoughts. Also, if you guys are wondering why in the heck we never caught any of these brown trout, click this link right here. It'll take you to the fishing episode from this trip, and I give my thoughts on why we never caught any of these browns. All right, now we're going to move on to Eagle Lake in the desolation wilderness of California. This lake sits at around 6,400 feet of elevation and is home to a healthy population of wild brown trout. One of the first things I noticed in this lake was this strange looking aquatic insect or crustacean. It has these like little arms that it's using to swim with. I, guys, I have no idea what this thing is. If you guys know what this is, leave a comment below. Let me know what I'm looking at here because honestly, to me, it just looks like that flying thing from Harry Potter. All right, guys, you know what? I think it's time we just sit back and enjoy the view.
I hope you guys enjoyed this footage. I love going out there and filming it. If you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps the channel out. And also leave a comment below, I'd love to start a conversation with you. Until next time, I'll catch you later. See ya.